Hi friends, I'm Golda Rose and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I am talking about grad school. I'm answering some of your questions and then kind of walking you through my personal experience so far now that I'm in grad school. So I'm about halfway through grad school now and I have some lessons learned and then I just want to talk about, you know, how I got to where I am right now. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel. And then go ahead and comment down below if you have some more general questions or really personal questions. I'll try and get to those as well. So let's go Go ahead and get started. Okay, so one of the questions that I've gotten is when did I decide I wanted to go to grad school or kind of what was my path? I, um, you know, did my undergrad in mechanical engineering and got a minor in physics and I kind of knew that, you know, hey, grad school would be cool. I, I was interested in going heard a lot about it. I knew that it would, you know, just make me a better candidate if I wanted to go looking for other positions. But I knew that I personally did not want to pay for it. I paid for my undergrad degree and I didn't want to have to pay for my master's. So one thing that I really focused on when I was looking at companies was how do they fund continuing education? You know, that could be going and getting certificates or going and getting a master's. So that was a driving factor for the company that I chose and I chose them. So my company pays 100% of my grad school. So um, with that, you know, there are, you know, grade requirements I have to maintain. Um, I think in order to graduate from grad school, you have to maintain it above a 3.0. For being able to get my company to pay for it, you have to get a B or better in every class. And so regardless of what the institution puts in place, so that is one aspect, but when you're doing grad school, you want to be getting good grades anyway. So that, that to me wasn't something that was going to deter me and make me want to pay it myself. Another thing that comes with a company paying, at least for my company, is that you have a, what's called a continuing service agreement or an agreement with your work that says, if you go to grad school for two years, you're going to have to stay with this company for X amount of years. So my agreement is for the amount of time I'm in grad school, I stay with the company once I graduate for that amount of time as well. So again, to me, that doesn't, that didn't make me want to say like, no, I'm still going to pay for it myself because I knew I would stay with the company. So that didn't matter to me in terms of like getting more experience with where I worked and moving up. So yeah, that's kind of been my path. I've been in the industry for about three years now and I've finally decided to go get my master's. There isn't any reason why I waited, you know, the three years before deciding to go and pursue a master's. But I think a driving factor is me realizing what I wanted to get my master's in. So that kind of leads me to the next part of this video in um, the question of do I recommend people going straight from undergrad to grad school? And I personally do not. There's a couple reasons why. One is, you know, based off my personal journey, I didn't really know what I wanted to do in terms of grad school. And I think if I would have gone straight in, I would have done, you know, mechanical engineering and I would have kept going, you know, deeper into that, you know, discipline. Whereas now I'm, for those of you who don't know, I'm doing a Master's of Science in Systems Engineering with an emphasis in Data Analytics. If you would have told me three years ago that this is what I'd be doing, I would have been shocked because I didn't know much about systems engineering, if, if anything, to be honest, and I didn't know much about data analytics. I thought, you know, software engineering is really cool, cybersecurity, all that stuff is really cool. There's a car. <laughs> But I didn't see how what I was doing in mechanical engineering aligned with that. Whereas now, you know, having three years of experience, I see where I fit into that and how my job, even though I am a mechanical engineer and I focus a lot on that expertise, and I am the only mechanical engineer in my team, I see how, you know, systems engineering kind of takes that, you know, going from very specific discipline, being mechanical engineering, and kind of looking at everything from a higher level. And for me personally, doing an emphasis in data analytics is because I really want to learn how to code and I want to learn how to do that. And I work with a lot of people who do that. So it is kind of beneficial for me personally to have that emphasis. Now, um, if you guys want, I can make a whole other video about systems engineering and um, kind of why I focus on that. But um, just to give you an idea, it's just to kind of take a step back and not go too deep into mechanics. So going back to the original question of do I recommend people going straight from a bachelor's to master's? I do not, but everyone has their own path. So I would talk to your advisors. I'd talk to, you know, people in your, within your company or other people that you may know or some professors and kind of get their advice. But me personally, I know from my journey, it would not have helped me 
to go straight into a master's program. It helped me to take that time to realize what my career was going to look like and what I wanted to do. And then, you know, have a company pay for it, get some experience under my belt and really figure out why I wanted to go into grad school and what I wanted to do. Okay, so next up, another question was, what was my driving factor for wanting to go to grad school? So just to preface this, I am a mechanical engineer. I have a job as a mechanical engineer. This, I don't think applies to other disciplines within engineering, and I'm mostly thinking about civil engineers. So we will <laughs> put the civil engineers over here for now. From my experience and what my friends have done, no, you don't need a master's to you know, have a good job and to keep a good job as a mechanical engineer, electrical engineer, and probably other engineers. But the driving factor for why I personally wanted to get a master's is one I kind of always wanted to get one I didn't know that it would help me be more marketable if and when I decide to you know switch companies or look for other jobs um, not that I'm going to right now but you know it's it's always a possibility that is one thing that you know sets you apart from you know other applicants and makes you marketable shows that you're like continuing to learn and continuing to grow in your area or within your career now that doesn't just apply to grad school and getting a master's, that applies to getting certificates. You know, there's a project management certificate and other certificates that you can get that um, like your PE and other things like that, that really make you marketable. So I'm not saying that this is the only way to be marketable. I know that grad school was the best bet for me in terms of like what I'm currently doing in my job and where I kind of see my job going in the future. I will also add that, you know, any way of, you know, continuously learning or furthering your career really helps you in the long run. I know that, you know, we have our experience in our jobs and within our careers, and there's other ways that you can kind of work within your company to make you stand out and make you different. Um, joining different programs, volunteering, things like that can definitely make you stand out if and when you decide to look in other jobs. Another reason why I personally wanted to get my master's is because I noticed within my organization that a lot of people who moved up or who got you know higher positions within the company had a master's. And I know that as you're trying to get you know higher level positions that at least in my company and a few others that I've looked into having a master's does help you and there is a lot you know and I, I can make another video about like what I've been learning in grad school and how I see it fitting into my job but there there's a lot that I'm learning since I've been in grad school and I'm only halfway through it so I see how it helps that doesn't mean that other you know certificates and other things don't i definitely see it and and it could just be a coincidence that you know majority of the people who i've seen moving up have a master's but that's kind of usually what a lot of the job descriptions and job requirements are looking for but i think starting out you know i'm only I'm only a little bit into my career so far, so I have a long way to go. I also knew that like in the future, I wanna have kids and I wanna start a family. So like going back to school, I just see that. I mean, props to the parents going back to school. You guys are amazing because I, I don't know if I could do it. It's already a lot of work and a lot of time management and doing social media and, and all the other things in my life. I know it's hard and it it's a lot of work because you're working full time, you're going to school full time and it's, it is a lot. So juggling kids on top of that, props to you parents out there. I commend you. So for me personally, doing it now was better than putting it off, um, especially when I'm, I'm trying to look at, you know, furthering my career and growing and moving up. So so going back to the original question, that is what has driven me to going to grad school and getting my master's. Okay, and the last question is, do I think it's beneficial for mechanical engineers to go to grad school? So I don't think, as I mentioned earlier in the video, I don't think that it is necessary. I don't think you need it to get a job. I know you don't need it to get a job. Most jobs just require a bachelor's degree. I think it makes you more marketable. I think that it doesn't hurt, you know, to further your career alongside, you know, certificates. If you decide that, you know, you don't really want to do a master's program, there's tons of certificate options out there that really help. One reason why I would tell someone that they need it as a mechanical engineer or electrical engineer, um, you know, civil, we're, we're over here with civil, they have other requirements. I think the one reason why I would say definitely get it is if you want to move up within your company or at least talk to some people within your company and see if that's usually what they require or look at job descriptions because they will have that you know 
preferred section. And so um, I know that usually they have, you know, higher degrees and things like that, graduate degrees listed in that preferred section. So it only makes you more marketable. And then another aspect is if you want to move up in terms of management. So if you want to stay technical, this is kind of where it gets weird and where I can definitely make another video about systems engineering and why I personally chose it. So all I want to say is if you do want to go into management and you don't necessarily want to stay too technical, definitely look into, you know, either an MBA if your job will pay for it and or just kind of taking a step out in terms of what your discipline is. For example, if I would have gone from my undergrad straight to grad school, I would have done mechanical engineering and then I would have had to find some type of emphasis within mechanical engineering that I would have wanted to focus on and do my thesis on. That could have been thermo, that could have been materials, whatever it is, you get more and more focused within your discipline as you're, you know, doing more technical degree programs. I personally, you know, now that I'm doing systems engineering, <laughs> and this isn't a systems engineering video, but now that I am in this, you know, graduate program, I am getting an outside look into how projects work together, how, you know, different disciplines come together and looking at things more of a system and not so much going into detail. So that's personally why I'm really enjoying it because I didn't necessarily want or have a passion to go further into mechanical engineering, but I do like program or project management. I like working together as a team and knowing how things fit together. And that's kind of what I've been doing in my job. So basically the purpose of this video was to kind of give you insight into my path in grad school, why I chose what I'm doing, why someone might want to go to grad school in different ways that you know you can fund it. I did mention that my job pays 100%. They do pay 100% along with me staying with them after I graduate for two years, which is perfectly fine with me. But that, it, that doesn't mean that, you know, other companies have different rules. I know some companies set a limit on what tuition or what schools you can attend, what programs you can do. I know for my, my specific company, you have to show that like you're on track to be a management if you want to do an MBA program. And then even with that, within that, there's like certain rules that you have to like follow to do an MBA program. It's like all this stuff. So I would definitely look into the company that you're working for or possible options if you are, you know, about to graduate and you're looking at different employers. That was definitely like a big thing for me was, you know, what what can I do in the future with this? And so, um, and then another thing is you can always fund it yourself. I mean, it was just me personally. I, I just didn't want to have to pay for it again. So that's my, you know, my personal choice. Everyone has, you know, different ways that they want to do it. So um, if your company pays for it, great. And you want to stay there, great. You want to follow their rules, great. Um, if you don't, do your own thing. It doesn't matter. There are grants, scholarships, other things that you can do, um, student loans that you can go ahead and take out. Whatever you want to do, if you want to fund it yourself, go for it. So I just want to kind of touch on that a little bit in terms of funding. So that wraps up today's video. I hope I answered all of your guys' questions about grad school and hopefully I gave you some clarity in terms of what my journey was and what your journey can be moving forward. If you guys have any personal questions or some questions you want me to clarify or anything like that, go ahead and comment down below. I love talking with you guys and hearing about your experiences. So don't forget to do that. And this is just a friendly reminder. If you haven't already, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. I really appreciate all of your support. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to watch more of my videos. So again, I hope you you guys love today's video and I just want to thank you guys so much for all of your video recommendations and all that and just for your continued support for you know what's almost going to be one year of my channel so stay tuned for the one year anniversary and um, I'm just really thankful for you guys and I will see you in the next video bye